In demo 4, we're going to look at cell copy and paste. We're going to look at inserting rows and changing number and date formatting, as well as adding borders to our cells. Well, let's say I'm responsible to keep track of the attendance of each of my students, and so I'm going to do that on another sheet. I'm going to actually use sheet 2 to do that. So I want to copy and paste my names here. So I click on the first name in A6 and I drag down to A11. Go up and hit the copy icon or just use control C. Move over to sheet number 2 which is in A1 and I can paste. I'm going to widen my column by remember double clicking between A and B and that automatically moves my column for the largest name, the widest name. Now I need the dates here to identify what date I'm keeping attendance for, so I'm going to have to insert a row. So to do that, you can click on the number in front of the row, and notice a black arrow shows up, and then the whole row is highlighted. And then I go up and all I have to do is click on Insert. Notice insert has cell and rows and sheets, but just because I hit insert, I'll do it again, it automatically knows to insert the row because I had the row selected. So those are the rows that I want to use. I just added two. Now I'm going to put in my dates, so I'm going to go 9-26-2011. That goes into the B cell. And now I'm going to use my handle to activate the series. Notice it automatically recognizes that these dates are sequential. Now dates are numbers as far as Excel is concerned. Dates are numbers. They must be put in and they must fit the cell. So notice we have a situation where the numbers aren't fitting the cell. The numbers are too big to see because they can't overlap. So I'm going to go up here to my number format and go down and say I want to use a short date. But notice my short date is no different than what I typed in there. So I'm going to go back down here and look at more number formatting and say, oh, this is much nicer. Let's use that short date. So it's a month, day, two digit year. Hit the OK key and notice all of my dates now match the sequence. However, I've got the Saturdays and Sundays in here as well. There's another Saturday. I don't want those in my sequence. Let's do this again. This time I'm going to show you what we should have done first. 9 slash 26 slash 2011. Before I changed it to the short date, notice I have the options over here for the fill. And in this particular case, I'm filling in the series, which is days but I can do weekdays only so it'll skip the weekends so I'm going to do that doesn't help as far as the width but we can go down and say I want to see more and again change it and hit OK so notice now I've got Monday through Friday Monday through Friday Monday it keeps on going so this row is not useful. So I'm going to highlight that row and I'm going to say delete it. So you got to be careful sometimes when you're doing the fill. You may need to change things and then that fill option doesn't come back. There's other ways of working that out though. As you notice there is a fill command right there and it's a, in this case it would be a series. Series and it's a fill and I want it to be weak days in that row so nothing's changed. So you can all I could have done it after the fact. So there's always at least two ways of doing 
everything. So let's go back to sheet number one. Here we are back at sheet number one and let's look at our numbers. So what could we change these numbers into? Well up here in our number pull down, right now they're just general numbers. If I picked numbers as opposed to general, it adds decimal points. And these two guys right here in my number group allow me to increase the number of decimal points or decrease the number of decimal points. Or I can go to zero. Next one, if this happened to be money, I could use currency. And notice the number gives me two decimal point currency with a dollar sign. If I used accounting, then the dollar sign goes out onto the edge. And I'm going to change Betty's score here from 25 to 0. Watch what happens with accounting when you have a 0 number in there. Notice it just puts a dash in accounting whereas in currency you would actually see the number. Well I just want to show you that even though these aren't dollars and cents we'll go back to our general numbers and look at that. Remember when you're changing the format of numbers and you select numbers and change their format and you get those railroad tracks that means that the cell is not wide enough to show the numbers. And we saw that with the dates. Dates are numbers. Now I want to add some borders. So I'm going to select A5 through F5 and up on the home ribbon I have borders right here. I can click on the down and pick any of these border types that I want to. So I'm going to pick the double border here on the bottom, bottom double border. Now when you do that, when you click and you create uh, your border, you have to deactivate it, click somewhere else to actually see it in action. Well, let's go over here to the student name and let's recenter that, center and center. So let's put that in the middle and let's give a little bold to that just to make it look better. So remember that alignment that we did right up there. So I've made my border on sheet one. I want to now move over to sheet two and I want to put a border on sheet two. So my border on sheet two is going to be either one of two things. It's going to be an all border or an outside border. I want to show you the difference here. Outside border just puts the border on the outside as you would expect. All borders puts the border around every cell. So every cell then becomes bordered and active like that. So that's the difference. I want to show you the difference between all borders and outside border. Now obviously if you're in a single cell the all borders and the outside borders will do exactly the same thing. 